de Mayo. <laughs> Whatever works for you. Tomorrow is Cinco de Mayo. Today, Cuatro de Mayo. Also, May the 4th. Star Wars Day, May the 4th. Be with you. So, uh, welcome. This is the Freakers Ball right here, right now, live on, as I mentioned, May the 4th, 2018. Slight clip on peaks I'm getting there on the uh, audio video, video stream I'm assuming he's talking about. Let me see. I'll dial that down a little bit here. See if that helps any. All right. Hopefully it doesn't take it down too far, but we'll see how it happens. All right. Uh, let me know. Uh, anyway, so uh, <laughs> what was I saying? <laughs> That's right. This is com. Freakers Ball. I'm Grimner. Moose Girl will be calling in shortly. Uh, the other the other half of the program. Um and, and uh, da, 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 we're live on rlmradio.xyz, uh, RLM Radio on the direct stream there. you got the IP address if you got it. Uh, we're on freedomsnetwork.com. We're on Internet Radio. We're on Tuned In, and we are live video on vonlive.tv. Also, reallibertymedia.com on the show page uh, there. So, uh, Juan Taco, did you, get, did, did you notice any change there in the uh, clips there on the peaks? Uh, let me know, please, if you would. Um, but, 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 what else was I going to say? That took the good away through. What now? I, I, I don't understand. <laughs> I, I don't understand. The chat doesn't always uh, translate into actual language. <laughs> Bump it back. Oh, am I too low now? All right, all right, all right. I, I, I was wondering. I went down to minus 45 dB. We'll go to, to minus 40 here and see if that uh, see if that goes. All right. <laughs> so we're at minus 40 dB down instead of minus 45. Hopefully that'll do the uh, the trick there on uh, that. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Let me know. Keep me updated. If not, I'll go back to 50. Or what? <laughs> I'm talking wrong. No, I'll go to 35. <laughs> more up, more down. Good, no. Yes, yes. Test, test, test one, test two. All right, let's take it to 35. I'm not getting a response, but I think so. 35 might be a little... All right, 33. <laughs> All right. We'll find out. Somebody let me know. Uh, yeah, either way, this this is what it is. I'm on my mic here. Sounds okay now. Okay, good. Peace. Perfect. Uh, like I said, Moose Girl will be calling in any moment. She, uh, I, saw her, I saw her log on to the uh, voice chat thingy, Bob, Bob. And uh, so she'll be with us any moment here uh, on this day. I, wait, I see Moose Girl is chiming in. Oh. All right. Um, maybe she won't be checking in. I don't know. I I I I, I got a comment from her on the side, and she's not feeling all so well this evening. So, uh, uh, do you want me to go ahead and do the show myself? I, I could do that. I, I uh, if that if that if if <laughs> if you'd like, <laughs> I'm okay with that. Uh, just because you're here doesn't mean you have to be on the air. I, I can handle it uh, if you're not feeling well. Perfectly fine. Um, so, uh, uh, okay, well, maybe just wait a while. And uh, maybe uh, if you feel better a little later on, then call in. Well, we'll go ahead and kick it off um, with some tunages here. And uh, come back and talk about A, B, or C. Maybe D. I don't know. Pick a letter. So you just hang, on, hang around and... Um, and uh, well, uh, all right, so so maybe maybe Moose will call in a little bit or not. She's not feeling too well, and and you know I, I you know I hope she feels better. But um, if not, then uh, you got me. <laughs> uh, well, you've, you've dealt with worse before, right? 
Uh, anyway, we're going to kick it off here. Uh, as I said, uh, today is May the 4th, a.k.a. Star Wars Day. And uh, being that it is that, here's this. Hey guys, thanks for watching. First off, you're welcome for uh, us watching your show there. That was uh, The Last Shred-Eye was the name of the tune. Uh, Jedi versus Sith Guitar Battle. But there is another. Yes, there is another. <laughs> oh, happy Star Wars Day. Yeah, before that, we had four Cinco de Mayo. I don't really know uh, of any Cinco de Mayo songs, so I just played Pee Wee Herman. Uh, and his, his little bar dance there doing tequila, yes, uh, by the champs. And we kicked it off with a weird Al Yankovic, and the saga begins. Yeah, the story of Episode One of Star Wars there. So uh, <laughs> I think we got that out of our system, out of the way. Um, <laughs> we don't really need any more of that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, Space Cadet Wars, uh, who knows what kind of stuff, probably all kinds of weirdness that we don't really want to know about. Um, <laughs> just, oh, man, I tell you, it's, uh, it's been a, another weird, interesting, oddball kind of week, but we're here, we made it through. Um, oh, yeah, let's do this one, too. Starting from the bottom, I don't know why. But I'm starting from Miss Moose Girl. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Uh, a little bit better. Well, I'm glad to hear that. The, uh, yeah, I just had a headache there. Uh, aspirin kicking in on you? I think so. <laughs> great, great, great. Yeah. So... But like you said, it is. It's been a weird week. It has been a weird week. Off you know? week. I don't know why, but I, I, I couldn't tell you. It's, it's just the way the, the way of the world these days. Everything's a little weird. Yeah. So, but hey, we made it through. You know, it's, it's weekend again. Yeah! Yay! You, you get the. You get... <laughs> Two, two days. It is the weekend. Two, two days of freedom. <laughs> right. <laughs> For you. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So. So, yeah. I just read something about, and I'm trying to find an article here, but anyway, apparently the ticks are supposed to be really bad this year. They say it every year, but I swear, apparently it's supposed to be a really bad year for them this year. And a lot of the ticks that they've tested in Eau Claire, 40% of them have tested positive for limes. Yeah, well, that doesn't surprise me none. No. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, I, I think a lot of it's, you know, they're, they're trying to hype some certain stuff up. Um, and uh, Grammy, I think it was Grammy, or was it in the chat? I forget where. Uh, we're talking about the, uh, remember, I, I think it was a couple weeks ago, I talked about the woman who was uh, trying to expose the uh, GMO mosquitoes and then uh, wound up um, suicided yeah. in, in her hotel up there in D.C. And uh, now now they're talking about the, the mosquitoes have been released and uh, Zika is on the rise immediately after they released all these mosquitoes. <laughs> Which... We know we know where the Zika came from. They they manufactured it. They engineered it. Um, so, you know, what, what are you gonna do? Um, <laughs> they're just. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry about what? I'm sorry. What were you saying, the lady? That's what now? <laughs> what was the last thing you heard? Uh, I was talking about the the lady that uh, was trying to expose the the GMO mosquitoes down there in Florida. Oh yeah. And she got suicided up there in D.C. and her place. And and now suddenly these mosquitoes have been released already. Uh, and uh, suddenly now they're talking about oh Zika's on the rise. 
they're talking about that again now? Yeah, yeah, but well, they released all these GMO mosquitoes, and we know where the Zika came from. Right. Because they manufactured it, right? So, yeah. Um, <sighs> Yeah, so so so, and somehow they're tying in the ticks this year. I, I'm not not exactly sure how uh, they're trying to relate those two things together, but but it's definitely um, something that they're doing that, that they're working on. Yeah, I this article uh, apparently in 2014, the health department began a tick collection project at two rural parks. To determine the percentage of ticks infected with Lyme disease. So apparently there's 40% of them, but I'm not, I mean, ticks don't like me generally. Like well, that's I'm, good. A lot of people are more susceptible to them than others. Right. Um, mosquitoes love me, but ticks, not too much. I have um, very few ticks on myself. Yeah, I don't, um, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever had one on me. Really? Yeah. Never? I don't think, do you have them in New Mexico, though? Oh, sure, absolutely. Okay. But we had a lot of them. We had a lot in, in San Diego, of course, and, and I hung out down in the canyon as a kid, and you would think I'd have, I'd have picked up a bunch of ticks, but... Right. Yeah, no, not so much. Um, but, uh... That's strange, because usually you're, you know, if you're in an area, you're going to find a couple of them, you know, just, even if you're not so set, they don't like you. You're gonna find at least one or two sometime in your life. You know what I mean? You right. Think, right. Okay. But um, I know somebody that has Lyme disease, or they've been told that they have that. Um, right. And it 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 does it's weird because like I guess there's a shot you can get once a year, or once every so often to try to combat the effects of it. There is yeah. no really cure for it. But it like travels throughout the body, right? It's kind of weird, like weird different spots, and his body will like swell up. Yeah, it's really weird. I mean, he does have arthritis too, but so the limes on top of that doesn't help. Sure. Yeah. Right. But I guess it's a real thing, Lyme disease. I mean. Oh, absolutely. It's a real thing to be concerned about. Um, yeah, and there's, 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 that you can there's no cure for ticks. it. Oh, go ahead. There, there's what? no cure for Lyme. No, there is no cure for it at this point. All right, well, if you get it, you know, you kind of suffer the symptoms. Yeah. As far as and I know... It affects it's... people differently. It doesn't... It affects people harsher than others. Like, you know, it just depends on you, like your immune system, or your, you know... Yeah, stuff as, like that. As far as I know, it's not deadly, but it's it no. But it can cause a lot, a lot of, problems. of problems. Yeah, throughout your body. Yeah, yeah, freaking Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember we go to camp and or we go camping or something, and my mom would be like, "Check yourself for ticks before you go to bed." You know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I remember doing that when I was younger. Oh yeah. Any ticks Even in my butt? Do, you know? <laughs> what? Any, any ticks in my butt? <laughs> <laughs> you hope there's not one there. <laughs> hey, hey, they like it where it's dark and moist and warm. They do. So, That's butt, true. so a butt crack is a perfect spot for them. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate ticks so so oh, bad. God. Oh, I just hate them. Like when the dog would get them on him. Oh, yeah. my God, I would just hate that so bad. Oh, I just hate them. They're just, ugh. All right, They're well, I nasty. Got, I, got, I got this Darwin Award winner video here to show you. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, oh you, nice. You, okay. may, you may find this disgusting. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 
There you have it. Darwin Award winner of the week. Um, this idiot <laughs> taxi driver, I think in India. Stop that. Um, he, he pulled over by the side of the road. He's got passengers in the back of his car. Yeah. He pulls over the side of the road. He sees a bear there. And he pulls over the side of the road. And he wants to go and take a selfie with the oh, freaking geez. bear. <laughs> <laughs> and he died. The bear killed him. I see that, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so, oh. you, you know, yeah. <laughs> you may think you've met stupid people, but <laughs> uh, his name was Prabhu Bhattara, and he was coming home from a wedding when he jumped out of his SUV, uh, <laughs> and, wow. and, and uh, spotted the bear, it's claimed. His passengers told him, yeah, you might not want to do that. That might not be the might not be the smartest thing in the world to do is to head over there next to that bear and uh, go for a selfie. But he did. He did anyway. And uh, apparently, uh, at some point, a stray dog tried to fight with the bear, but uh, the dog didn't really do anything. It's a bear. It's a bear. Right. <laughs> a bear will mess you up. There's no doubt. <laughs> and they're faster than you think they are. Well, he went right up to it. Right, he went. <laughs> this, uh, this bear buddy, didn't even. On, this, this bear didn't need any speed. <laughs> He's gonna walk up there. Right, apparently, yeah, he just, you know, uh, oh, dinner. God, idiot. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Wow. Oh man, I tell you. <laughs> wow. We'll take a selfie with a bear. What do you think's going to happen? Oh, no. I'm being invaded by spiders. You are? Yes. Did did did, did you have a bunch of, uh, was it wet there? You had a lot of snow, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you got a lot of moisture there for the spiders to... Yeah, they're bad this year. Oh. Well, that's, that's pro that may be part of the deal, Goober. I, I doubt that he went and asked, talked to the bear and said, hey, I can I take it. a yeah, selfie? I don't, I, no, I doubt no he, he, he just imposed upon the bear. Right. And the bear said, fuck you. <laughs> right, your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like delivery. Uh, right. <laughs> Uh, the bear must be like, well, did I, did I, did I call for delivery? This is faster I than Domino's. This is faster than Domino's. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Idiot. <laughs> I think oh, people think God. that they're smarter than animals a lot of the time, which they're not. R right. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, what, what would... What would it make anybody go walk up? I mean, people are, are they aware of bears? They know what bears are and what bears right. do. Uh, who would walk up to? So. Who would walk up to one and and? <laughs> right. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. That's so stupid. But right. he won't be doing that again. No, he will not. No, no he won't. not in this lifetime. And hopefully, this if, lifetime's over for him. If what? anybody, if anybody else would be thinking that's a good idea, hopefully they'll see this video and realize, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. I don't think I should be doing that today <laughs> or any time. <laughs> no, 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 bad idea. Bad yes. idea. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, I, I don't know what to make of this, because they don't really show a good close-up of any of these things, and, yeah. and so we don't know what they are, but apparently, um, thousands of jellyfish-like creatures washed mm -hmm. up on the beaches of Barcelona. Okay. A couple of days ago here. Uh, so, Barcelona's beaches have been carpeted with thousands of mysterious jellyfish-like creatures, turning the city's white sands... A rich shade of blue. Fortunately, the animals, identified as Valella Valella, are relatively harmless to humans, making the invasion one of the more uh, more of a natural marvel than a toxic emergency. Valella look like jellyfish, but are actually floating colonies of microscopic hydrozoans. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> Tiny predatory creatures that generally live far offshore in the open waters. Valella have a small, stiff, sail-like structure uh, to harness the power of the wind and allow them to travel across the water in search of plankton and other small prey. Mm -hmm. uh, it says the summer months, Valella generally move closer to the summer, but it's not summer yet, generally move closer to the shore as water temperatures rise. Here, they are vulnerable to sudden strong winds, and the colonies can end up closer to land than intended, resulting in local shorelines painted blue, known by the as the by-the-wind sailor, or sea raft in English. Stranded Valella colonies are a common sight in the western U.S. coast. Oh. So, anyway, I, I, it, it just it looks weird, um, the the picture, and and uh, the, the for the whatever reason, uh, all these what the hell is that? Somebody put a quote into. I'm yeah, a bear. Somebody put in a quote. It says I'm a bear. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> what, did I, what, did I, what did I forget here? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> people are just dumb. They just don't get it. Yeah. No. They're, they're people are dumb. Uh, and and and. You're gonna get what you get, man. Jellyfish like jam fish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, toe jam fish. Um, different, I, different thing. Uh, yeah, that that's that's completely separate. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Unbelievable. Yeah. The world is crazy. So over so, there, over there in ahead. over there in Hawaii, and I don't. Have oh my a, God! I was just going to say that. Okay, great, perfect. I'm talking about that. Do you do you have a what? story? Do you have a story? Well, I just have the Daily Mail story. Okay, that's they great. They get good pictures. I mean, anything for a link that that I could put into the, the blog. Right. Yeah, they get oh. good pictures. I mean, the yeah, Daily yeah, Mail yeah. is, you know. Yeah, they always have they good have, pictures it, somehow. I don't know how they get all their good pictures, but they do. Yeah, they have correspondents all over the world. They yeah. have people that work for them all over the world that are stationed in Hawaii. You know. Right. So, so Kilauea, Kilauea, Kilauea. Yeah, Kilauea. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it went off, and it, we were talking about it in the chat earlier today. Uh, I think it was when I was talking to Rome's or yeah, I think it was Rome's uh -huh. <laughs> this morning. <laughs> I was like, hey, hey, I got a good idea. Let's go build us a house. Right at the base of that active volcano. Right, the base of an active <laughs> volcano. Let's go live there. Let's, Let's go. just go live there, and then when it, when it, you know, it explodes or whatever, we'll just be like, we have to leave. You know, I mean, you can't bitch about it because you chose to live there. <laughs> Let's put our house right there at the base of the active volcano. Let's do that. Nothing There's wrong with that. There. <laughs> That'll work out just fine. <laughs> just fine. I mean... What do you expect? I, you know, when I see that Kilauea is exploding, doesn't it do that pretty much every day? Oh, it's been active for what forty, fifty, sixty years. I don't yeah. know, a long I mean, time. it's gonna, it's gonna do this. It's gonna do what it did today. That's, it's bound to happen. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oops, what did I do there? <laughs> a grizzly will hunt you down for sure. Just like a volcano will if you get in their way. Right. I mean, a volcano doesn't care. They does what it does. What it does. I mean, if you cho choose to take a chance and live there, you know, that's your choice. And so, I so guess apparently, I, oh, go ahead. I guess, I guess the quake that they had in conjunction with this six point nine. Yeah, it was the strongest in seventy five when they had a seven point one. Right. Um. So, you know, that's uh, the Earth's moving around down there, and uh, it's yeah, li liquefied it's and. And, uh, so, yeah. I just, I, like, I, I agree with you. I mean, I would not. Bears don't climb palm trees, Vinny. Hawaii is gorgeous. I get why you want to <laughs> live there, but they have to deal with this, you know, worry about this well, every I mean, day. There's, there's plenty of places, there's plenty of places you could live in Hawaii without being that close to the volcano. Right. 
Now, right. I, I, I don't know what their, you know, crowding situation is over there, but I think it's pretty open. I think there's a, a, lot, a lot of places over there that uh, are wide open spaces that nobody's living. Kind of like it is here. Probably how it yep. is. How, probably the same as it is in Wisconsin. You got little clusters yep. of people here and there, and then a bunch of wide open spaces. <laughs> right. I mean, it's it's although those wide open spaces are getting filled in more and more every day. Yeah, not so much here. Um. Actually, I think they're probably emptying out more here than they are filling in. <laughs> you know, you got these people that don't want want to work in the city, but they don't want to live in the city. So then they go buy a plot of land out there in the country that used to be a farm field. You know, and that's they they say, "Oh, we're living in the country now." You know, it's like, yeah, you are, but you're huh. not no farmer. I mean, I get it. I get it. Why you want to live in the country? Um, sure. It's nice out there. It's yeah. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Great to get away from people. But at the same time, we need places to grow food. I mean, the the dirt's fucked up. I get it. The dirt's fucked up now. But there's, I mean... Yeah, the dirt, the air, the water, it's all messed up. <laughs> yeah, everything's messed up. So life is a crapshoot, but that's always been the case. Life is always a crapshoot. That's life. Right. But still, if you're going to move to a place and you know there's some kind of dangerous feature there, maybe back away from it a little bit. Right. May, I mean, may, maybe don't you know, don't don't build your house right right in the, you know on the on the center of the fault line in California or <laughs> on the crumble or in, the, in Mendocino County or, where it, it's a tinderbox every day. I mean, people are you know it's nothing to mess around with. Or or on that, the crumbling extreme out there. You know the, the crumbling cliffs overlooking the ocean. Where you've right. got to you got to build stilts to hold your house up in the right first place. Right on the edge of the fucking cliff. Yeah, and then okay, <laughs> and oh, then okay. and then be shocked when your house falls into the ocean. Right. Oh, my house fell in the ocean. I lost everything. Well, yeah. You chose to live there. I mean, <laughs> just like me in the winter, I I can bitch about the cold, but I really can't complain too much because I fucking still live here. I stay living here. <laughs> hey, I hate it so much. I'd have to move, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Hey, I don't I think mean, I even said hello to all the people here in the chat. I don't hi. know if you did. Hi, all the people in the chat. <laughs> I think you did, but... I don't think I did. Oh, <laughs> That's please. good enough. Uh, oh, by the way, yesterday, for those of you who don't know, and when you see him next, just mention it, yesterday was Gary L's birthday. Yeah. So, happy birthday to Gary L. Yeah, happy birthday, man. Hope, hope you had a good one. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I... Anyway, so people that want to live in, you know, next to a volcano, um, I, I haven't heard any um, sob stories yet, but I imagine there will be some. There probably will be. Um, yeah. I haven't heard of any houses being destroyed at this point. Well, they, they said the lava was flowing through towns. So, oh, okay. That's I, I got to imagine, and and they showed some of it where it was approaching, but oh, okay. I, I didn't see any houses blazing on fire. No, I didn't either. Um, I haven't seen pictures of that yet, but um, it's certainly very active right now. Yeah, if it, what we actually went in in uh, one of those pictures, the, like the third one down, I think it is, on that Daily Mail article. Yeah, you could see there's a house right there. And and there and there's a bunch of uh, oh yeah the yeah whole, and the whole end of the block is all molten lava <laughs> right so oh geez. it's coming toward yeah. it's coming toward them <laughs> wow you, know? you can't stop it there's nothing you can do about it yeah yeah no 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 there's there's no you can't do like in Hollywood where they put a bomb in the earth and it makes a channel for the lava to flow through or some right, kind of like bullshit in the movie. like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll direct the lava. Oh, God. But, yeah, no, you won't. Yeah, no, 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 you won't. 
<laughs> are, are you going to go in, you know, drill down into the center of the earth and fix the core or whatever? Yeah, uh, no, that, that, no. that, that, yeah. that's really not going to happen. No, it's not. <laughs> wow. So it's not even a good idea. <laughs> no. All right, well, we're going to hear some music here. Um, okay. <laughs> So we're going to kick it off with a little Van Halen. All right. For you. This first track is called Eruption. Yeah, that was John 5 and the Creatures doing Now Fear This. Before that, Rainbow Man on the Silver Mountain. Uh, yeah, little Richie Blackman, nice little warm up there. Just kind of goofing around, uh, getting himself lined up there for the, for, the, for the tune. And we kick it off with Van Halen with Eruption, and you really got me. <laughs> Uh, well, good morning there, Boxified. Uh, gl glad hey, you're uh, having dinner. Rose is here. Trust what? no one. Trust no one's here. Yeah. Yeah. And Boxified just woke up from his. He's, he's nuking a TV dinner. Oh yeah, that's. Uh, it, okay. it, sounds, it sounds horrible, but you know. That does sound horrible. But but to each their own, and and it, 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 one thing right. you know, it's filling. It's filling. So. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, this graduation thing is driving me fucking crazy. Vinny, let me let me tell you right now, Vinny. I am not playing Brad Paisley. <laughs> uh, it's a funny song though. It's more tips. It's really funny. Oh, so should I play it? Well, it's up to you, but you don't have to. Well, it's funny. I'll, it's I'll play it. I don't. Yeah, I don't care. I just, I was like, uh, this is like some. It's, it's, the reason he requested it is so you're we talking about tips. All right, I I never heard of it, but all right. So, I'm not, I'm not surprised you've never heard of it. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, we'll play it. That's graduation fine. That's things drive me fucking crazy. 18 years ago, almost, I was nine months pregnant. Yeah, nine months pregnant. And I tell you, this, this, this time right now is just as stressful as that time was. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, oh, my God. Come on. <laughs> anyway, oh my god. Okay. So the the highlight of my week was definitely watching a couple interviews with an individual who I thought was very interesting, Robert O. Dean. Okay. And I will post the links oh shoot. What did I do? Oh, I'm fine. Okay, I will post the links um uh, in the chat, so you guys can watch them at your leisure. All right. Very interesting man. Um, he was a he was in the military for like thirty or forty years, and the, when, ever since he's got gotten out of the military, he's been discussing things that he learned while he was in the military. Okay, doing his specific job. His he, at one point, time. had top-secret, cosmic top-secret clearance, which is, like, the highest level of clearance you can have in the military. Okay. Oh, that's the same one. What the heck? There's another one. There's two of them. Robert Odin. Robert... But... It just says Robert he, Dean. It doesn't say Robert Odin. Oh, okay. Th this one, this next one does. It's, it's the same guy. Oh, this one I haven't finished watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I don't know if that that's the exact proper word, Vinny, but. Um. <laughs> anyway. Oh, um, well, O is his middle name. I see. All right. Yes, anti hand. I don't know. I have something to say. I don't know if I have to tell you anything. <laughs> but um. A lot of the stuff I, I, I've 
once you start doing research, if you're into learning about extraterrestrials and all that kind of stuff, um, once uh, you scratch the surface, there ain't no coming back. I, I am an extraterrestrial. Well, we all are in some way, really. We all are. Yeah. We all are. And and so what can you tell us about those two videos? Okay, well, one thing I can tell you is at the end of the first video, which is the hour, hour and 30, hour, hour and a half uh, video, he shows some very good slides at the end and photographs, slides of photographs from ancient times. Wait, he, wait, 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 wait a second. He take, has photographs from ancient times? Well, they're pictures of paintings or whatever. Oh, okay. A picture of a painting. All right, all right. Or a picture of an artifact. <laughs> I thought I thought maybe he found some cameras from, you know. No, no, no. But <laughs> you would, you, I mean, okay, speaking of Star Wars, remember in the first movie, the speed racer, whatever they called it. A episode four, the, 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 yeah, the land, land speeder. Yes. He showed the picture of this artifact from, like, the Mayans or something, or Aztecs, right? All right. And it looks like, if you turn it one way, it looks just like a pendant or an amulet or something, right? Okay. But if you turn it the other way, it looks like a fucking little space dude riding around with a fucking self-propelled fucking vehicle. Neat. It's just really trippy. I mean, I've, I've, I've known about this stuff for a while. Like, Wait, free, free, what free, free, was free enslaved, free enslaved says there are Polaroids from 3,000 years ago. Really? That's what he says. I don't know, man. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I've I've never seen any, but <laughs> um, yes, I know goobs. That they were called. Even this guy says unidentified flying objects is not the correct term because they are. They have been identified. The objects have been identified. <laughs> oh, they he's know. only joking. <laughs> yeah, I know. But okay, so no, this guy. The guy's story is in a nutshell. He went into the military. He went to officer candidate school because he wanted to be, he didn't want to be a, a, you know, just do the regular thing. So he goes to officer candidate school. He graduates from there and he goes to Korea. And this guy says he should have been dead six times. He should have died six different times and he did not. Maybe he's a cat. Well, no, he was in Korea. He should have died twice there. He was in Vietnam. He says he should have died two or three times there. He could never figure out why he never did. Why all these other guys around him were dying and he wasn't. He didn't. Um, but anyway, after his military, you know, the, being in the involved in, on the ground and everything, wars, he went to work for Shape, which is, and this is still called this today, the Supreme Headquarters, the Allied Forces, Allied Protectors of Europe, or something like that. I can't, what is it? I'll have to look it up. Exactly. I forget. But it's SHPE. And it, it was in Paris. So he was stationed there as a, a special ops. That's when he got the cosmic um, top secret clearance. Okay. And so basically it was like a war room. You know, and it was run by the US, UK, and uh, the Germans. Which and there's other higher ups from other countries there, but it was that was the main the main people in charge of this is the U.S., the U.K., and the Germans, right? All right. Well, so anyway, you know, Roswell happened in 45, right? 47. Okay, 47, 45, whatever. I always forget that. But anyway, they they actually found a, a, a creature in that crash, and they did an autopsy on him. Right. And, well, of course, the, the public doesn't know any of this, right? They've kept all this information hidden. So anyway, ever since that happened, they started doing compiling data and doing research and doing an investigation. Well, in 1964, they published their information. They published all the information that they found in a top secret document, thick document, right? All right. Uh, thick book. Okay. You know? And so all the people that worked at the shape had access to this book. And there were, I mean, there were higher ups in the military working in this place, Gen top generals and everything. All, all had top secret clearance, cosmic clearance, 
and so they when they read this thing, Robert says it changed everybody's life. Like, it changed your perception. It changed who you were because it was so obvious, you know, this is, you know, what they found out, right? So, basically, because they never believed until then. Well, I think people knew, but they didn't put the information all together. Like, you know what I mean? And so when they did this, and they finally compiled everything because they had different people doing different parts of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the one general retired shortly after he read it because he he was stunned. He's like, "My God, you know what this means?" <laughs> and the guy, people, the guy's like, "What?" He's like, "This means that any weapons we have here aren't shit. At of any course. point in time, any one of these other fucking." You know, people or creatures or beings, whatever you call them, at ETs, for lack of a better term, to wipe us fucking off. Oh. Yeah. Absolutely. Do that? I mean, yeah. so the whole point of all this military shit is is pointless. Oh, it's just a blow up of the we humans. Think we have. A, what? It's just to blow up other humans. Right. Well, we think we have, you know, the market cornered on these fucking weapons and shit. It's like, not compared to other universes, we do not. They are way more technology technology advanced. Well, right. until, until, you come up with the, uh, until you come up with a better energy source, and then you can create energy-based weapons that are effective... Not these ones that they got now. They think, oh, we're good. We we made a laser or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's those are nothing. Um, but uh, yeah, not with none, none none of the energy sources we have um, that we know that we know of. I should say, because the, the energy sources are here. They just haven't been figured out where they are, what they are, and how to tap into them. Right. Well, they. I know that um, they have. Identified twelve different ETs, twelve different groups of ETs. Four of them are Greys, but they don't. The one that scared them the most is the one that humans resemble. Well, that so they makes can sense. Just, they walk among us and they look like us, but they're not us. They're they're above us. They're high. They're ETs that are from a highly advanced uh, universe. Sure. I mean, I've known about a lot of this stuff. It's just kind of interesting to hear some first-hand account of it. And there were some pictures that I saw on there. Like, when the Apollo 13 went up, pictures were taken, but they didn't release those pictures to the public. Right. And you could see, I mean, what they saw up there, they didn't want, it, they didn't want the public to know. Let's just put it that way. They, they withheld this, this information from the people for a very long time. And they it's really hard they're, for them to do still it withholding it. They can't control when these <laughs> the discs are gonna fly over, right? They can't control it. So no. they have to just you No, know, they they gotta discredit anybody that says they, they saw discredit it. Discredit people, right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and if, and if that don't 19th, work Oh go ahead. If that don't work they just send out those men in the black with a little flashy thing to Yeah. <laughs> But apparently in 1964, something was going on because these discs were flying over Russia. And they, the Russians were pissed. They didn't know what the hell it was, right? And yeah. so they thought it was like, you know, a declaration of war or something. So almost there was almost a war between the U.S. and Russia in 1964, which no, no a lot of people don't know that. That's one thing I learned about from this guy, this Robert Dean or whatever. And he's been around for a while. He's like in his 80s now or something. Yeah. But he's very sharp. And it's just, I mean, I was I was hooked. As soon as I started watching, I was like, oh, my God, this is awesome. You know? Great. Yeah, great. Yeah. No, so anyway, I wanted to share that. That was the highlight of my week because other than that, that was about it for the week. <laughs> 
Well, cool. No, that's but that's it's good. It's really cool. I think it's cool. Like, it I'm, is not cool. Of it. I'm not afraid of E.T. I, at all. I'm not. I think it's really awesome, you know? Uh, yeah, no, it's great. It's terrific. And there has been, like, a war going on, like a universal war. And it is kind of like Star Wars. It's kind of like the light versus the dark. You know what I mean? That's how I picture it. Well, it's... And, it's and uh, say, oh, there's a... Yes. What? Go ahead. It's, you know, it's uh, the superior race against against the dumb humans. Well, no, it's not against the humans, really. It's going on up unbeknownst to us. And and do you, do you think humans will ever get to that that uh, that 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 level? level? Uh, I believe in reincarnation, so I believe that you sometimes have a choice on what, where you're going to go. All right, well, I could just say from this article, this one article right here, it's not looking good. <laughs> okay. Why? What's up? <laughs> this article from uh, cnsnews.com. Yeah. 65% of public school 8th graders not proficient in reading. 67% not proficient in math. Wow. <laughs> so, so you got a good, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta good two-thirds of the kids coming up in these in these government indoctrination centers. They ain't learning nothing. Nothing. Uh, they're, they're learning about their feelings or whatever. You could never tell my kids that. They'd be like, no, we're learning stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, this is this was of uh, eighth graders, uh, but in eighth grade, if you don't know how to read or do basic math, how did you get to the eighth grade? Uh, anyway, according to this here, American public schools in 2017 were not proficient in reading or math, according to the National Assessment of Educational Progress Test. What the hell is that? Uh, results released by the Department of Education. It says the results are far worse for some students enrolled in some urban areas. It says uh, among 27 large urban districts for which the Department of Education published these test scores, the Detroit public schools had the lowest percentage of students who scored proficient or better in math and the lowest who scored uh, proficient or better in reading. Only 5% of Detroit public schools, 5% could, could read or do math. 5%. Oh, wow. How are they making it through these schools? In Cleveland, do you have a doctor? You, you listen to this? In Cleveland, 11% were proficient in, or better at math and 10% in reading. Wow. Bad. Baltimore's not much better. Fresno's not much better. Um, it, 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 it's, it's just so. The, so the best cities are Charlotte, Austin, San Diego, Boston, and Guilford County. I have no idea where that is. Those are the top five. Um, and so, but even that, even the top city is only forty-one percent. That's the best out of the country, 41%. <laughs> wow. That's not good. That's not good. I mean, it just goes to show you how crappy the education so, system is. So, it's, so it's how, how are we going to build how are we going to build Goober spaceships if we can't even do basic math or be able to read? Right. I mean, I can I, I guess my kids are lucky that they're graduating this year because they're both in pre-cal and they're both passing it. So, I guess there's hope there. Yeah. But you said these are 8th graders, right? 8th graders, yeah. Oh, okay. So, well, they're, 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 not, to go. <laughs> they're, they're not they're not they're not quite to calc yet, but if they can't do no, if, no. if they can't do basic math at that at, in, in the 8th grade, eighth grade they're uh, they're not. They're not going to get there, and 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 we're not going to be building any spaceships, Goober. Hate to tell you, just ain't going to happen with, with these right. guys. Yeah. 
I think the best you can hope for, Goober, is to be inducted. Outsource it, yeah. He, that's why Asia's doing so well. They can actually Alien do, abduction. They can actually, <laughs> we can actually do math over there. Because <laughs> we know the aliens, or ETs, have the technology. We've seen them. We've seen it. Yeah. Well, Pox, you know, as long as you know the the uh, theory behind the math, you could you could figure it out. Even if you're not really sharp at it immediately off the top of your head, you will be if you just do it for a couple of days. You already you already got it down. Um, so th that's not a problem. And if you do some programming, which of course I know you do, then you got the logic. So you, math is logic. Uh, yeah. So you know you're there. It's it's not a big thing. Um, as far as reading, I can read great, but I can do it very slow because I just I, I I get I read over and over and over on certain things because it's like that didn't make any sense to me. And, <laughs> and I read it back, and, and it's, sometimes it's me. Most of the times it's not. Most of the time it's the way the idiots wrote the shit. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh yeah, Hans is a sanitation engineer. That's what he kind of engineer he is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, I mean, uh, I know the basics, but I'm math is not a strong subject for me, not at all. Yeah. But, yeah, oh, well, I, I did. I, I didn't I, go. I didn't yeah. go very far for uh, in math in, in in school, public school, because they told me. Uh, the uh, whatever these counselor type people they weren't really counselors but whatever they were they they had a new plan that they were coming out with and they said all right because they came to us in the eighth grade and said all right yep. uh, anybody that that you know wants to get out of doing math in high in, in high school just take this math class next year and you won't have to take any through high school wow and I was like cool great of course you know not great. really not really thinking ahead that uh -oh. these, these guys are screwing us by doing this by by not having us take these math classes that right. we that we need in high school but uh, they they just you know made it sound very appealing to kids that age that hey you can get out of taking math in high school by doing this cool i'll do that <laughs> right cool <laughs> <laughs> so so um, but but I learned more more than not in school than I ever learned in school. So whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean you know it's like you know, we didn't even have computers back then. So uh, no, was, we did not. No. Yeah, and then I, and I'm six years ahead of you. So we barely uh, did. I yeah, mean, I was in, I graduated eighty five, so we had one computer for the whole high school that was had to go through the. Uh, Minneapolis Department of Education, with a stupid phone modem thing, and it barely worked. And it was DOS, you know, it wasn't fancy at all, no pictures or anything. You know, yeah, there, like there, was, there was actually a, what they called a computer lab, but it wasn't really a lab. No, I mean, it was just that's a, what we had and, to. And, and the thing is, you wouldn't want to go in there because you saw the people that went in there and they were like these total freaking geeks. Yep, yep, total <laughs> geeks. They knew it was this new thing that was just coming on the scene, and it was just and the people that were into it right away were the total nerds in your school, <laughs> which is true. It's true. It's not true. Logic oh, programming, what? logical thing. Well, you have to have logical thinking in order to do logic programming, free. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the question is. Yeah, and we when we had word processing classes, and that involved one of those dot matrix printers. Remember that word processing classes? Yeah, well, I, I yeah, remember maybe when that I, was after your time. I don't know, but <laughs> that's what we had word processing. Like Anti, really cool I, I do, I do remember when when I got my my first digital calculator. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. Remember it, it only that did too. the very basic functions because it was. You know, we, we, I, I, was, I wasn't rich. I couldn't afford a two hundred dollar <laughs> calculator. <laughs> no, logic is logic. Uh, you need logic right. to program. Logic's not a form of programming. No, logic is is, is 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 blocks or however you want to think. 
A is to B, you know, those kind of things. Or if this does this, then do this. Otherwise, do this. Right. And then within that, yeah. So, um, a lot of people lack that. Or especially in school, they don't teach. I mean, maybe there is actually a class you can take called logic in college, but not in high school. You know what I mean? You know, it's like, you're free, do you do electronics, don't you? Because, you know, electronics, you got all the AND gates and OR gates and NOR gates and uh, it's <laughs> control thing. Yeah. Um, well, base, those, are, those are languages, BASIC and C++. Those are languages. But they, right. And, They're not and, logic. But, but you have to use uh, the same basic concept, regardless of what language you're programming in. The, 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 <laughs> the syntax is different for each language, and then you, then you got various... Uh, right. You, know, you could build various libraries or use pre-built libraries to, to perform certain functions so you don't have to write out all the code. Flowcharting. There you go. That's programming. Flowcharting is programming. Yep. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're going to hear some more music right here, right now. All right. And uh, this first song, uh, you probably not heard this particular version of this tune. Okay. But you'll probably be able to sing along with it, and and I think you're going to enjoy cool. it. This is a guy, I guess that's a, is a guy's name, named Ronald Reggae. Is this the Must escape from reality. Oh, yeah, that is some sweet, sweet stuff there. Joe Bonamassa, double crossing time from the British Blues Explosion live. Ah, just uh, just great, great stuff there. And before that, some not so great, great stuff by a guy named Brad Paisley for Vince, uh, called Ticks. Uh, Blue Scroll said it was a funny song. I don't know. I I guess it's a funny song. It was hard to listen to for me, but uh, apparently he had the video. He had a big old crowd there, and all those people there in the crowd seemed to enjoy it. So right. I, I don't know what I've. Uh, I, whatever. Anyway, we kicked it off there with Ronald Reggae doing a Jamaican Rhapsody. <laughs> Such a great song. Uh, he he just uh, it's a new one from him. He's he's also uh, got another track out there. If you if you look up Ronald Reggae on the, the YouTube's, you find it. it's called Dust in the Weed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, not 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 as good as that one, but it's still still dust in the weed. You know, check it out. Like um, dust in the wind. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's done uh, okay, to Kansas, cool. just like that. Yeah, I know you don't like Kansas, but I like the song. Well, but but like just just like that, you know, is uh, done to the Queen song, uh, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, it's Jamaican Rhapsody. Oh, nice. That would be good too, probably. I really like the, the would be good. You already listened to it. Called? That's the first that was the track we just played. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it would be good. It is good. <laughs> I really like the um, the first song you played, though. The that, Weird that, Al. That's very creative. Oh, the Star oh, Wars one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the yeah, saga be the saga begins. That's true. I'm gonna have to have him watch that one because he's a huge Star Wars fan. He would probably like that. Oh, okay. so, can I imagine he hadn't seen that already? Uh, he might have. He probably has, but yeah, they don't tell me everything. So right, right, right. So um. I try to show them cool stuff. I was trying to tell them about the UFO guy, and they thought I was off my freaking rocker, but that's all right. What, I don't what, care. What? what, what they it doesn't don't bother me. They, they think I'm nuts, because I know what I know. They don't, I know they, they don't, they don't believe not. in UFOs? Is that what you're trying to tell me? What? No, they, I, they they said they do. I said, this, I'm like, do you believe in UFOs? He's like, yep. I'm like, okay, so you agree with everything I said then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't die. Way, but, I didn't quite dive any, but... Uh, it was it was a close one. I did start to feel a little nauseous there, so. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, he didn't die. He he survived. I, I did I did start to feel a little little rumbling in the old tummy, saying, "What what is this coming into your ears? This this is not working well with your system." 
<laughs> sea media. I have a sea media as well, uh, Pox Five. Almost went to tilt, huh, Grim? What? Say again? Almost went to tilt. Yeah, almost went to tilt. I, I was pretty close there. Yeah. yeah it was, I, it was, it was, I was on the edge, but then Joe Bonamassa came on and life and was, but life, well, life yeah. was fixed. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I've got an so old C me media oh, on my, uh, on my, uh, on my Linux box. It's a great one. It's it's got full 5.1 and uh, everything. You know, it's 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 a good it's a good uh, little USB sound card. You, I I gave you one too, Moose, didn't I? Yeah, I did. One yeah. of those one of those C media cards. Yeah. I have it. I still yeah. have it. It's a different model than you than you got there, but right. uh, it's it's older. You know, I don't know how that's. Yeah, like, it's old. It still works though. Yeah, yeah. Still, it's like a ten year old twenty dollar. USB card. <laughs> yeah, it was not expensive at all. <laughs> but I mean, uh, apparently there's this booze cruise coming up, Graham. Oh yeah, let me, uh, let me. Uh, Keep the uh, link I, I, to me I, today. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got a link for it here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That would be awesome. I mean, that would be fun. Oh yeah. You know, if you're gonna go on a cruise, that's the way to do it. You know, go oh, for yeah. a music thing. Don't yeah, go I got, for like, the, a regular I got the, cruise. I got the, yeah, no, I got that a music concert cruise would be sweet. What? I got that in the email last week from Joe. Joe oh, did you? Okay, I have, I didn't see it. I, I mailing Yeah, so um, check out that freaking lineup, man. You got Bonamassa, oh, you got Maybe. Kenny Wayne Shepherd, you got Walter Trout, Ruthie Foster, Samantha Walter Fish. Oh, oh. Now, they, Lark, Larkin Poe is is, go, is going on this tour, and 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 I, and I think I've played some Larkin Poe on here before. I think but so. Yep. They, I, I don't I don't really get it. Um. <laughs> well, here, here's, here's, I don't listen to too much Larkin Poe, and, and here's the reason why: is once I listen to one of their tracks, all, all like half of my recommendations on YouTube went to Larkin Poe. Oh and, and yeah, like, you know that you guys happened. are okay yeah. for what you do, but you you really don't have too much going on. Um, I, I I don't know. It's interesting that that they're getting. As much attention as they are, for who they are, um, but uh, <laughs> whatever. Right. I mean, uh, it would be fun though. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it would be a great time. And I, and I lose people. Yeah. I think you should go. I think that would be that you would know, be you, fun. You and Kate out there on the boat having a Fuck good old yeah. time. See, Blues they, fans are the best, dude. Besides, I mean, you, you know, you might you might be able to hook up with Joe. Oh yeah, right. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. No, let's not even go there. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm not even. That's not even. No. No. <laughs> see if Beth Hart was going, I might, I might go and try and hook up with her. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Samantha Fish is going. I, I know Samantha Fish will be there. She, she's, she's great, hot. So. She, she is hot, but you know, she's if I was hot. gonna. She's skinny. <laughs> that girl is skinny. She needs to eat something. If I, if I was gonna hook up with the blues girl, it, it'd be Beth. She's Hart. very skinny. Yeah, yeah. Be Beth Hart would be the one. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, Beth Hart. She's hot. Yeah. Uh, she's just yeah. What did you miss? Hansel is here. Holy he is. hell! Welcome, Hansel. <laughs> Space Wolf is Welcome. here too. Did you say hey to Space? What? Did you? Oh no, I, I didn't. Yeah, Space that. Wolf hey, snuck Space in Wolf? there. Yeah, he snuck in. Snuck in there. I didn't see him sneak in there. See? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Way to be sneaky, Space Wolf. I tell ya. <laughs> no, way to be sneaky, buddy. He is the Space Wolf, so it makes sense. You know? Right, yeah. And he'd be sneaky, you know. Right. Yeah. Barack Obama was on air? On why? Air? Where? Why? Oh. Ew. The question is, Who why? Cares? <laughs> Why we, we don't deal with him no more. We're done with that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure he's doing what he does, but, you know, he's just not, like, important <laughs> any longer. I don't know. Like, they show a picture of his supposed daughter, Malia. Not Malia, Sasha. She's 16. They show her at a party. I'm like, who fuck cares? She's right. at a concert or something, you know. It's like I don't need to. It's, it shouldn't be news, and that, that's how it is here. That's how it is. We all know that. I, I, you know, it's weird, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's strange what we're supposed to pay attention to. You know, and it's I also mean, strange. Yeah, I watch the Daily Mail, but I don't. Uh, it's also Put strange. Every story. It's a, it's also strange what you're supposed to believe. Right, that's true too. Such as such as this particular story here. All right. <laughs> did I spell that right? No, I did not. <laughs> uh, I, I always I always forget one of the eyes in opioid. Um, opioid, yeah, opioid. I know. It, it's a tough word. Was, was this often fail to switch from RLM to YouTube? You got me recommends after I, I I don't know what you're talking about. Um, okay, here it is. Authorities blame Bitcoin for the opioid drug epidemic. <laughs> what? Oh, come on. <laughs> I shit you not. <laughs> they're putting it out there like, yeah, this is real. Yeah, it's Bitcoin. That's that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, that's the blame. This thing yeah, got nothing to do with CIA. This got nothing to, to, to do with Big Pharma. No, no, no. Bitcoins. They're the demons. They're the evil ones. If you want to see why people are dying in the streets for, yeah, for right. opioids, yeah, it's Bitcoin. Because somehow Bitcoin actually grows the opium and turns it into whatever drug and supplies it to the people. <laughs> Oh, wait, none of that's done with Bitcoin. Oh, oh, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. according to Patrick Smith here on Beat10ZTalk.com, uh, authorities have found a new scapegoat to blame for the ongoing opioid drug epidemic going on in the U.S., Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, and they go on to talk about this guy in Utah. Aaron Shamo is a Utah native who discovered Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in 2009, soon after it was created. He then began mining for Bitcoin while he was a student at Utah Valley University. He continued to accumulate more of the cryptocurrency as he made through life. Stop popping up in my way there, stupid thing. I'm not going to share you. I already shared you. Um, he continued to accumulate more of the cryptocurrency as he made his way through life over the next few years. Seeing his investment investment culminate with Bitcoin's highest recorded price amidst a crypto craze late last year. It appears that Shamo's wealth is not a result of early investment in the lucrative trade. Law enforcement says that he utilized the internet to sell narcotics and accepted uh -huh. Bitcoin for the transactions. So therefore, wow. because this one guy did this Made made a bunch of money uh, mining bitcoins and, and and collecting bitcoins, and then he made some money selling some people some products they wanted for a currency they desired to use. <laughs> God damn! Oh God! Anyway, Shamo was accused of selling fentanyl, a deadly opioid that is fifty to a hundred times more powerful than morphine. Where did he get the fentanyl? Huh? 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 Uh, huh? He allegedly ordered his supply from China, where authorities suspect the, the purest form of the drug is manufactured. They they make fentanyl over there in China. They take the the CIA opium and they turn it into fentanyl over there. Right. <laughs> Wow. Anyway, so in 2016, uh, the pigs raided his house, discovering more than 500, discovering as if uh, 500 bitcoins in the residence, Ooh, along with cash and pills. The bitcoins wow. were valued around $500,000 at that time, uh, and but since have skyrocketed to over $10 million. Of course, they're not giving those back. Um he is currently no. awaiting trial in, in prison while prosecutors investigate a number of fatal overdoses that they believe are connected to his alleged drug ring. He's only one guy. How's that a ring? Right. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, you, you blame the Bitcoin and to find a way to get your, your you know, to, to push it off. To, he, they're, they're a perfect straw man uh, for, for your evil deeds. Oh, definitely. Uh, I know. Yes, people use all kinds of things to buy to buy drugs with Space Wolf, but yep. no, Bitcoin's evil. 
it's not controlled by by them so um <laughs> So if you're using Bitcoin, uh, you're you're a bad bad person. Just just ask. They got a picture of hundred dollar bills here floating around inside of a washing machine, Launder, <laughs> laundering money. Right. <laughs> Fake money. As, as if that's what the term <laughs> laundering means. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh God. <laughs> uh, so it's fishing open opening weekend in Wisconsin. Sweet, you get a license? Uh, no, not yet. No, I I, I probably won't go. Fishing. Where do you go? You go for those? What do you, what do you those? What are those? Those big ass fish? What are they called? Muskies. Muskies, yeah. You go for those? Oh no, muskie. Okay, so a muskie is the fish of ten thousand cats. If you fish for muskie, that's all you fish for. You don't fish for the other stuff. You only fish for muskies. These guys are like hardcore. Like, you can fish for them for fun, you know, and a lot of people will be fishing, and they'll catch one, not knowing they're going to catch one. That happens sometimes. Sure. But the guys that are true musky fishermen, and they have special poles they use and everything. Like, I had a musky pole. I ended up selling it. Um, It's like, it's hardcore to to fish for them exclusively. what, 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 What do you fish for, then? Walleyes and crappies and good eating fish. I, I like trout and bass personally. Okay, well, yeah. I mean, bass, uh, largemouth are okay eating. If you can get catfish, yeah, that's. Smallmouth are really good eating. Too, if you, if you can bass. get catfish, that's that's the best fish, but. Those, See, we don't. We're up here in the Midwest. I mean, yeah. we have catfish up here, but they're not, you know, they're, they're the same, but they're not like the southern catfish. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, trout, 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 trout's trout's the most plentiful down here, and uh, then it would then it would be bass, and then the catfish. Yeah, uh, um, we got bullheads up here too. Bluegill. <laughs> yeah, know, bluegill, bluegill are really good and crappie. Yeah, you just gotta you gotta you gotta catch a lot of bluegill in order to. Well, I. Bluegill are so small, you, get, you know. If you get some bluegill, gill, some plate size bluegill, we call them plate. Yeah. And even crappies, if they're you know they call them plates, and they're they're huge. Oh yeah, we got huge bluegill up here. Huge. Look at that little flash. And crappies. Oh, I see. And then we're good eating <laughs> fish. But anyway, um, I haven't been fishing for a long time. My favorite fish to fish for is walleye because they're very elusive. You have there's a technique to fishing for walleye because their lips are really thin. Yeah. You can't just hook. Pull the you can't rip you hook rip the hook right out of their lip. Right. You got to make sure you hook you know set that hook right. Sure. And it's just kind of a they're very good eating though. Oh my god, they're amazing. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but bass up here we have you guys don't have smallmouth down there, do you? Well, yeah, there's I well bass come you know they start small. But do you no smallmouth. There's two. There's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's though. smallmouth bass here. Oh, okay, so you guys got smallies down there. Those are hard to catch too. But once you catch, start catching them. Those are really good people. Well, you're, you're talking about uh, o- ocean fish in there, uh, Chloe. I guess you can catch salmon yeah. in the stream, but 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 yeah. But tuna, tuna. You're not gonna get that in a. In a that's that's ocean. Yeah, tuna. And- Soon as ocean for sure, and a lot of salmon you got those do in the ocean, but you can catch those in the stream. Perch is good if you can catch some good sized perch because perch is in the walleye family. Perch is another, and then there's saugers too, and that's in the walleye family as well. But uh, I think actually walleye is sauger. But um, perch usually when you catch a perch, they're too small to keep. They're like you can put them in your fucking tank at home. Oh, yeah, well. And they're too small. you got to catch too many. I don't think I ever got Yeah, they are good, though. They are good eating. There's no doubt. They're in this walleye family, so they are good eating. There's no doubt. Cool. All right. So, uh, what do you what do you personally think about fracking? I hate it. Have you ever said anything bad? Have you, ever, have, you, have you ever said anything bad about fracking? Yes. Well, you then, my friend, I'm a criminal. 
are now considered. <laughs> That's what there. now? What label is going to be put on me now? <laughs> domestic, me, do, domestic, domestic extremist. Okay. Yes. Anti, right. anti frackers, <laughs> anti frackers branded domestic yeah. extremists yeah. like jihadists or neo Nazis. <laughs> so you're the same as a jihadist or a neo Nazi. Yeah, that's Because right. you yeah, don't I'm want. Like yeah, and yeah, they still whatever. got a picture of it here. Uh, here on this uh, RT.com article, anti-fracking activist Ann Power, 81, is removed by police during protest. So she is now a domestic terrorist, 81-year-old woman. That Are did, you really kidding me right I, now? I'm not kidding you. Says after really? A, Come on, people. After a two-year legal battle, suspicions have been confirmed that sections of the British police are targeting anti-fracking campaigners under the new counter-terrorism oh prevent program. The, <laughs> the Network for Police Monitoring, NetPol, announced Wednesday that after two years of legal battle, the Home Office finally handed over the sought-after training materials used by counter-terrorism officers in the prevent strategy. That's the name of the program, prevent. Uh, materials oh, yeah, released sure. covered slides from the workshop to raise awareness to prevent rap w workshop to raise awareness of prevent rap is what they call it. Whew. And, oh, <laughs> both, both Manchester and Mercy Dare Mercy Side Police, as well as the Home Office documents for the workshop facilitators and facilitators for rap events. So um, there, there, there. I, that's 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 really the core of the article right there. It goes on to talk about a lot more detail on that. But if you are an anti-fracker, then then you are no better than a neo-Nazi. Bullshit. You are. You're the same as 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 a, a as. That's uh, someone's opinion. That's a, not a, a, opinion. A, a, Just because someone thinks that doesn't mean I have to agree with them. Well, it's yeah, it's them. It's the government that thinks that. Yes. It is. So there you go. Fuck yeah, them. Yeah, well, you know what else they think, too. No, I, I, I don't. Yeah, I do. I do. Here, here in the U.S., here's what they think about you. I know what they think, but go ahead. Police cadet quits. Police cadets quit. More than yeah. that. Exposed department for training cops to view the public as cockroaches that they are at war with. Wow. That's right. And you're, people sit there and still say that you're a freaking, the U.S. is a free country. You're a what are you basing cockroach. that on? Anybody that says that, I'd like to know what they're basing that on. And, and they still, they, oh, we got to support the police. Um, no, no. Uh, we got to? That's, that's, anyway, it says it takes at least four years of college for an enlisted person in the military to become a military officer, which is quite a contrast from the mere nine months it takes for police officer to earn the title. But according to a group of 10 former Austin Police Department recruits who wanted to become peace officers, just like the military, the Austin uh, training, is warriors instead of garden, guardians. The former recruits are now blowing the whistle and claiming that the type of mentality they encountered is not what they signed up for. You might want to show this to Zach. Uh, yes. well, not what they signed up for. It is not representative of the greater Austin community, but it is representative of the Austin police. Um, Spisak, a summer Spisak, a 38-year-old former tech employee, participated in the nine weeks of the eight-month academy last year, said instructors told her and other cadets to punch them in the face if they said they wanted to, to be police officers to help people. Wow. Punched you in the face if you want oh to God. be a police officer in order to help people. Spisak and others are now sounding the alarm for the public, saying the police are being trained to view community members, you and I, as the enemy, not as their fellow citizens. Right. It's also different from what is portrayed. It's it's so different from my expectation, <laughs> there you go, uh, of the Austin right. Police Department, Spisak concluded. K V U E Austin? Wow. Yeah, Austin. Austin I Police they were Department. More like, oh, you know what I mean? I didn't think they were that hardcore there. Oh no, they're they're horrible. They're horrible. So they really? view sex workers as insects and homeless people as potential targets for prosecution. 
Um, <laughs> That's fucked up. It differs vastly from the generalized public perception of officers. Right. Of well, those who we've are. We've been told something else. You know, wait, 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 let me finish this. Wait, wait, let me finish. Of those who are sworn to protect and serve <laughs> <laughs> members of the community. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so it basically comes down to this. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What kind of a cop sucker you are, if you think somehow that oh I I I can you know if I if I'm just good I support the police and and and, and I do exactly what they say everything's just going to be just fine. You're fooling yourself. Right, you are. Yep. Let me put the tag here. Cop roaches. <laughs> Jeez. Can't make this stuff up. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, don't be a cop sucker. No. Oh man, but you no. know, the training is supposed to keep you alive by killing other, by punching other people in the face if they if they think they're there to help people. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're a cadet. You want to help people? Bam! And just oh lay your God. ass out. That's just. Wow. So there you go. Show that show that article to to the boy. Zach, and I say, will. You know, <laughs> you think it's yep. different here? You think it's different here? It's not different here. No. It's, it it's the same all across the freaking U.S. of A. Right. So, uh, it's the same every, everywhere. Yep. Anyway, we're going we're gonna to hit some more tunes here. Alrighty. <laughs> Let's uh, do that. Yeah, this, is, this is the world. This is the world we live in. This is. It is. This th is it. This is what you got going on right now. No matter No matter what you've been told throughout your life, this this is the reality of the matter. Okay, these are two guys uh, by the name of Lenny and Eric. They, they sound kind of dorky, you know? <laughs> Playing a song by, by some guy named Bob. <laughs> yep. Devolution. Yes, indeedy. That's what we're going through. That was uh, corn with evolution there for Mr. Poxified Phone Home Guy. Uh, great, great, great request there. Uh, good, good video. Good song that uh, yeah. just just came out on April third. Ooh, new one. Um, I I don't know if it's new or if it's from an old album. Oh, okay. Oh, the but video they, came but, out. But the video just came out, yeah. Anyway, before that we had Amy Allen. Oh, no, 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 no. She does not want to be. The Interrupters. <laughs> she, she, doesn't, she doesn't want it to be called Amy Allen and the Interrupters. She just wants that to be one of the band. She is uh, a, a great, great artist. Anyway, that's the, off of their brand new or upcoming album, I should say. It's called She's Kerosene. Uh, the new album will be out on June 29th. The, it's called Fight the Good Fight. And nice. You can, you can pre-order it Good. there. Um you can pre-order it from wearetheinterrupters.com. And we kicked it off with Letty Kravitz and Eric Clapton doing Bob Dylan's All Along the Watchtower. Awesome. Uh, Puck says, yeah, it was from a 2007 old album. On time. Oh, okay. Okay. But the corner is still good. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, a, that, that's a great tune there, a great video uh, yeah. of, of that particular tune. So. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Cool. <laughs> it's not so much that people traded goob, it's just the culture that was created, you know? I mean, people have been trying to fight the good fight, like, for a while, you know? It's just the majority of people are hooked, and it's really hard to get them unhooked. And if I learned a long time ago that you can't unhook somebody. You have to, they have to do it on their own. So, to... You're better off just focusing on yourself and doing what you can for yourself and preparing yourself. Because you're never, you're not going to get all the fucking people to fucking come along with you, buddy. No matter how much you fucking put in front of their face, how much evidence you put in front of their face, they're still not going to believe you. Absolutely. You know, you're just better off just saying, you know what, fuck them then, you know? I mean, I, I'm sorry to say that because I had the same issue a long time ago, too, where I was, like, always, like, worried, like, almost worried about other people. Like, 
I'd always say stuff like, what are people going to do? What are the, you know what I mean? And then over time, and through talking with people in the chat room and everything, they got me to realize that it's not worth my time. Because if someone doesn't want to know or learn or grow, it, there's nothing I can do about it. Not a damn thing. Nope. And so I'm better off just focusing on myself. I'm not sure what y'all are you talking know? about, but she's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, he just, Goob said, made the comment that people traded the forest for drugs and creature comforts a long time ago. Well, that's because of the culture that they've created. They've wanted us to be under control. They wanted us to be fucking drugged up. They wanted us to be fucking, you know, only learn what we tell you to learn. You can't think for yourself. Think what we, you know, do what we say and think what we think. You know, and I'm sorry, you can't do that to people. You can't control people that way. You can no. try. Right. But they And they've been successful with a lot of people, obviously. Sure. Not with me, yeah. but, oh, yeah. you know, their shit works. It does, and it, it works. But they do work. And you can't you, you can't force people. As much as it pisses you off and you want people, you just want to bitch slap people. I get that. But how many people... But you know... Yeah. But but how many people has this has this uh, dragged into its, its claws of belief? Ooh, claws of belief. I like that. Uh, anyway... <laughs> 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 the stunning statistical fraud behind the global warming scare. Now, I I know that good 70, 80% of the people out there actually believe in global warming. They think it's a I, real yep. thing because right. they've been lied to. They've been drawn into it. They have yep. been deceived. But here it is. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the NOAA, may have a boring name, but it has a very important job. It measures U.S. temperatures. Unfortunately, it seems to be a captive of the global warming religion. Its data are fraudulent. What do we mean by fraudulent? <laughs> How about this? The NOAA has made repeated adjustments to its data for the presumed scientific reason of making its data set more accurate. Nothing wrong with that, except all of the changes point to one thing. Lowering previously measured temperatures to show cooler weather in the past and raising more recent temperatures to show more show warming in the recent present. This uh, creates the data, a data illusion of ever-rising temperatures to match the increase in CO2 in the Earth's atmosphere since the mid-1800s, which global warming advocates say is a cause-and-effect relationship. The more CO2, the more warming. But the actual measured temperature record shows something quite different. There have been hot years and hot decades since the turn of the last century, and colder years and colder decades. But the overall measured temperature shows no clear trend over the last century, and at least not one that suggests runaway warming. That is, until the NOAA sat statisticians adjust the data. Using complex statistical models, they change the data to reflect not reality but they, their underlying theories of global warming. That's clear from a simple fact, from a simple fact of statistics. Data generate random errors, which cancel out over time. So by averaging data, the errors mostly disappear. That, however, is not what the NOAA does. According to the NOAA, the errors aren't random. They're systematic. As we noted, all of their temperature adjustments lean cooler in the past and warmer in the in the recent future, recent past, recent past. <laughs> but they're very fuzzy about why this should be. For far from legitimately adjusting anything, it appears they are cooking the data to show a politically correct trend towards global warming. 
not by coincidence, that has been part and parcel of the government's underlying policies for better part of two decades, what the NOAA does aren't niggling little changes either. As Tony Heller at Real Climate Science website notes, pre-2000 temperatures are progressively cooled as post-2000 temperatures are warmed. This year has been a particularly spectacular episode of data tampering by the NOAA as they introduced nearly two and a half degrees of fake warming since 19, or 1895. The global warming scare is a hoax. Fake. Bullshit. <laughs> this, this winter, for instance, as measured by the temperature in city after city by snowstorm severity, has been one of the coldest on record in the Northeast. But after the NOAA's wizards finished with the data, it was about average. <laughs> Climate analyst Paul Homewood notes, for instance, that New York State measured temperatures that were 2.7 degrees or more colder than in 1943. Not to the NOAA. Its data shows temperatures this year as 0.9 degrees cooler than 1943. So by a factor of two-thirds, they, they adjusted that. Anyway, I don't, I don't need to read you all of this here because you already know. I've talked about this global warming hoax for ten years, at least. Um, <laughs> ever since I ever came on the air, was one, of, one of my main topics was the global warming hoax. Um, but I guarantee you, you go out there and, and, and you talk to various people about global warming, you're going to have at least two-thirds of the people out there believing oh, that, yeah. that it's all absolutely real yeah. and that something must be done or the world's going to suddenly burn up and die and it's your fault because... Well, yep. you 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 breathe, you eat meat, you drive right. a car, uh, yep. uh, you, you do all the things that they tell you not to do that they do in abundance. Right. Uh, uh, did I put that link in the chat? No, I didn't. It's all right. crazy. That from Investors. dot com, Investors Business Daily. <sighs> what am I saying? I am saying that there's historical documentation. We can go, we can talk for days about all this shit that they've done. You can bring up history all you want. Iran Contra, whatever. You can go back to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Go back in time. There's a zillion <laughs> fucking examples of shit that they've done. Shit that's part of their agenda. I right. mean, to Absolutely. go back there and rehash it all, yeah, that's great, but you know, the past is, you should learn from the past. You know, you shouldn't live there. Yeah, the CFC, is my take that, on was, it. That, mean, that was a load of crap, fuck, too. What the fuck you, you know, I, I would never <laughs> tell anybody what, what the fuck to do. You know, I give uh, suggestions. Yeah, I, yeah. That's I, I, I got but one, I got one you're going to like. Okay. <laughs> Sounds promising. Oh, king of the vaccine. Um, okay. Oh, geez. Bill Gates warns of warns <laughs> of doomsday global pandemic that could kill 30 million people in under a year. <laughs> the only problem is he hasn't quite invented that 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 uh, that the virus yet. <laughs> didn't say that. Uh, during a speech for the Massachusetts Medical Society in the New England Journal of Medicine last week, Bill Gates warned an audience that humanity must prepare for war uh, with a global pandemic. And, and we, we know how well the, all their other wars work out. Whenever they have a war on something, it, it increases exponentially. Uh, anyway, we, so we must prepare for a war with a global pandemic, which he believes could kill 30 million people in the span of six months. Gates predicted that there is a reasonable probability that the world will experience something like this in the next 10 to 15 years. As soon as he comes up with the formula to create that virus, it, it'll, it'll happen. Um, anyway, with, while this alarming prediction... 
bullshit prediction is all entirely theoretical. There is no evidence that a massive outbreak is on the horizon, and there's currently no plague sweeping the planet aside from government, I mean, aside from cancer and heart disease. Did I say that right? The doomsday scenario that Gates laid out in his presentation was not based on a specific disease, and his numbers were not derived from any current studies, other than the ones he's working on to, to, to design this virus. Yeah, Windows is a whole, a whole different kind of virus. Um, <laughs> malware. Rather, he, he used a computer-generated model that took data from a massive outbreak that occurred before the advent of ma medicine and sanitation and scaled that to the that data to the world's current population. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, see, I, you know, how how would how would a place like the Onion or Mad Magazine or Cracked or whoever be able to compete with what's really going on? I don't know. <laughs> it's just total insanity. You can't make this up. <laughs> These are the ways these guys are really talking. I haven't had any, even had any good Pope stories in, in a few months, but that guy, man, there's a lunatic, let me tell you. Oh, yeah. Big time. <laughs> God. Totally. Oh, I have not, uh, I, I did a, I did a, I did a, uh, a virtual box with uh, Windows 10, and, eh, I got, I, it was just a virtual box, so I'd have to worry about it screwing anything up. Right, but, uh, right. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I, uh, I have no interest in Windows 10. And uh, I, I, Windows 7 will be my last Windows, my last version of Windows. And uh, once it once it craps out or I can't, I need to get a system, and, I, and if I can't find uh, a Windows 7 that I can put on it, like if my per present Windows 7 won't transfer over or whatever, then uh, that'll be it. I'll be done. No more Windows 7. No more Windows. So, uh... Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like, you know, people are like, oh, Windows 10's fine. It's like, I just cringe every time I hear people say that. It's just like, oh, no, it is not. No, it is not. No, Certainly it not. is not. I would never, I would not get a Windows 10 machine. Yeah. No. That's why I'm willing to you know, but Rome, seriously, if you do go, if you want to get a good computer of Windows 10, you're going to spend about 800 bucks. Rome seems to like it. Right. If I can get one for uh, Windows 7 for 750, I'm going for that. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and you can always build your own and and still buy the Windows 7 disk. Right. 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 True. Yeah. But. Uh, but how much is that? You know. What? The disk. Oh, it's, I don't think I think you can get them on eBay for cheap or. Like what's cheap? I don't know, ten bucks. Really? I don't know how much they are, but oh, yeah. you can just buy the Windows operating system. Yeah, you can buy that as a, as a as a what, what do they call it OEM type thing, and then oh, just, okay. then just build your own computer. That would probably or, be the or way just, to go, then. Yeah, you could just buy one and, and then you know with a, with a blank hard drive and put it on there. Um, but but it's the, the thing that comes down to is uh, software, Windows software and stuff. People keep updating and changing it so it's eventually right. your Windows 7 software is not going to you're it's only going incredible. to be able to use the old software uh, but right. if you go to oh, okay. Linux you'll be able to use you know whatever state of the art stuff is there you go Windows from Torrent $7 on eBay oh okay cool I mean I think I would um, go to Linux so yeah yeah you're better off because cause you can use yeah. all, I mean, everything can be up to date and, and you're safer and Right, and when it's just as, I liked it a lot when I was using it, yeah. so. Oh, no, no, it's great, it's great. I know that it's a good alternative. It's actually better, I mean. Oh, you don't, you can get the torrent for free without, but the, what you're paying for is the license. Yeah. Right, you need the numbers, so yeah. So, if you can get you the license off of eBay or wherever, um, and it's a, a valid license, then, 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 then you're good to go. Um, and if not, you can still buy the discs. You can still buy the Windows 7 discs. Um, so. Right. Cool. Yeah, cool. Anyway, we're going to jam some more jams here. Alrighty. 
And this first one is a Mr. Cowboy Tech request. I don't wonder what he's going to do about his Windows operating systems when this time rolls around. In the year 25-25. Wiser words were never spoken. Don't fear the reaper. Yes, indeed. Blue Oyster Cult there. <laughs> Before that, uh, a gal by the name of Ivy Lavon doing a song called Hot Damn. And let me just mention about Ivy Lavon here. Um, I, I went, after I'd found that song some time ago, I, I went through and I, I checked, because I really loved Doug that song, and I, and I went through and checked out a bunch of her other music. Some of it's really good, like that one. And some of it's not so good. Um, she uh, <laughs> She's an interesting gal, um, but she's never going to be in Imelda May. Of course, Imelda May is no longer in Imelda May. She, uh, <laughs> she's gone down a whole different path in her career, uh, in her musical style. Anyway, we kicked it off there with a track for uh, Cowboy Tech, uh, Zager and Evans, in the year 25. 25. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know. What route does she go down? Um, it's, uh, more of a, more of a, I don't know. It's, it's a a sad kind of music. Uh, Oh. You know, she had, she, she had, she had that divorce, and, and, and I don't, she's not happy, and, and she, she kind of just, I don't know. Well, maybe she'll make a comeback. Well, then that, 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 that's what I'm hoping, you know, and it's been, an, I don't know, a year and a half or so since her last album, which, I mean, it was very good music for what it was, but just not my style. It was, it was, right. not, it was not rockabilly whatsoever. Uh, okay. Um, d- apparently, Don, Don really liked it. Uh, okay. Cause I kinda got it's hit. not your kind of music. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of got Don hooked on, on, on her. And, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> right. Which wasn't hard to do. I, I mean, just listen no, to it. No, she's fucking awesome. Great. Um, and uh, and, yeah, and I'm, really I'm kind of awesome. I'm, I'm kind of hoping Liv Sin comes back to doing some better stuff too. I mean, she's still trying, but she's not quite. She's not really sure where she was with Sister Sin. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, whatever. What could you do? It happens. <laughs> right. It happens. It happens. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. yeah, I found that Grand Funk ro- album, and I I pulled it out of the thing, the cover, and it looked perfect. Like, it never been played. Now I looked and feel it all rights on there, too, which is another cover. Right. And Give Me Shelter, which is cool. I haven't listened to it yet, but um, I need a good player. I need, like, a JVC or a Pioneer or a Vintage one, you know? Yeah, I got my sister one of those for her birthday. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. pretty cool. It's on Amazon. It's like fifty bucks or something. It wasn't too Sweet. bad. Sweet. What kind was it? Uh, I'd have to look it up. I don't, I don't know. Oh, okay, no big deal. Off of hand. Yeah. But cool, yeah. Was it a vintage one though? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, like from the eighties or whatever. No, no, no. It, it, it was Older? new, but but it was vintage style. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Style. Yep. I, yeah, they have those out there. It's just like, that's just not the same thing. Yeah, it was, it was re- re- retro, retro, whatever you want to call it. Okay, but like at the one thrift store that I go to, it's called The Attic. Yeah. Like, they had, like, two really nice, like, Pioneer turntables, like, from the 80s there. I'm like, oh, man, I want one of them. But I didn't buy them at the time, so I didn't have the money. Right. And, you know, but the, you can find those at places like that. Like higher end consignment stores or whatever, you can find the vintage ones. I'm sure you can find them on Amazon too, or eBay or whatever. But right. But anyway, those the, uh, the new school ones are cool. They play the records, right, Graham? Oh sure, sure. Uh, yeah, they do all kinds of great stuff, actually. Um, anyway, I, I got I got to mention this video so I can put it into the blog. Um, I came across it the other day, and it's called "Is Mind Over Matter Real." It was an interesting little okay. video. It's only, it's only less than, you know, just about four minutes or so. Um, but uh, so I just got to mention that video so I can throw it into the blog. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. And, and uh, you know, that, 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 uh, that 
channel, uh, Institute of Neotic, Neotic Sciences, uh, is, is a good one to subscribe to uh, there on the YouTube. They got all kinds of interesting stuff. Cool. Yeah, you could go ahead, Flash, and fear the Reaper if that's your desire. I I would never be one to tell you that you can't. I would just say it's <laughs> probably not in your best interest to do so. Cause right. The Reaper don't give a fuck. <laughs> not really. Well, he don't care. He's got one job. He's, he's coming when he's coming, and you can't stop him. <laughs> no, he's not going to do. All right, well, we we got we got to do this. We got we got yep. we, we, we got we got to take care of this last piece of business right here right now. Uh, this is the Mason Rack Band. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's the basic rack band over there at the Blues Moves Cafe doing uh, Black Betty. To close it out for us. I love that version of that song. It's awesome. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Oh boy! Anyway, um, that's that's gonna be it for us tomorrow morning at noon Eastern. Morning is noon. Is noon morning? Uh, tomorrow at noon Eastern is the Dark Table with Grammy Mary and Flash, whatever Flash, <laughs> man, Flash of many names. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, on the Dark Table, I'll be on Sunday at noon Eastern with the Blues here on RLM Radio in the tri trivia here in the chat. And Hal Anthony will follow me at noon at <laughs> noon Pacific, three Eastern, uh, with uh, behind the woodshed there. Open up big old can of whoop ass, Gary L, uh, Mr. Happy Birthday Boy, and uh, Gigi's Boo will be on at 7 p.m. Eastern Sunday evening on RLM Radio. Thank you all for tuning in and playing yeah, along thanks, everyone. in the chat and all that, uh, making requests, all those cool things you do. Yeah. And that's it. Yep. Peace. Peace.